Welcome to another instructional video here on a toasty mid-October day. It's Sunday, October the 15th of 2023 in Los Angeles. Just checked the weather. It was about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, if you can believe it. At any rate, uh, we're going to try and find the centroidal location as well as the mass moment of inertia of a circular arc. That is what I'm picturing here in the shaded portion. Um, here's what you're given. You're given a circular hoop that has a total mass of capital M. It has a radial dimension little r. And like I said, in part A we'll find x bar, which is the centroidal location of that shaded portion, as well as the mass moment of inertia IO. Let's call O the origin of this xy reference frame. You have to imagine that the z-axis is coming in and out of the plane perpendicular to the plane of the drawing. So that IO will literally be the mass moment of inertia about the z-axis. Before I get into this, remember a little basic math from uh, grade school that uh, the way the arc length of a portion of the circle, the radial dimension, and the subtended angle are all related is through this little formula, S is equal to R times alpha. The way I remember that is to replace S with the circumference. We all know that the circumference is the full length around the circle and uh, obviously r stays the same but the subtended angle of a full circle is 2 pi radians so you'll remember that c is equal to r times 2 pi or sometimes you would say 2 pi times r and that's the way i remember this formula so let's jump right on in here is the same picture i've uh, kind of dashed out the circle so that we can focus on this i've also shaded out in red the little differential patch that we'll put our focus on. It has a radius of r again. It's at an angle of theta as measured counterclockwise positive from the x-axis. And then it subtends a little differential angle d theta. So the differential arc length ds going back to this formula is going to be the radial dimension times the subtended angle. So ds is equal to r d theta. I'm going to do this problem using first moment with respect to lengths. And here's that formula. It's x bar times the integral ds is equal to integral of x tilde times ds. Obviously, the integral of ds is nothing other than the arc length of this portion of the hoop. And uh, again, going back to the same formula, we know that it's going to be r times alpha. And that's what I'm saying over here on the left. x tilde is the location, the x location of the centroid of this little red patch and you'll notice that it's the adjacent to that angle of theta. That is to say it's the cosine portion. So x tilde is literally r times cosine of theta. So that's this piece. And then we said that ds is r d theta. Notice that you have two r's on the right. You have one r on the left. And so one of these r's on the right are going to drop out. And you're going to get x bar times alpha is equal to r. The integral of cosine of theta d theta is sine of theta. And the limits of integration, as this patch starts way down here at an angle of theta is equal to minus alpha over 2, you're going to sum it up, sum it up through the integral, all the way until the patch winds up at the top part where theta takes on a value of alpha over 2 positive. And don't forget that the sine function is an odd function, that is to say f of the argument minus x is equal to minus times f of the positive argument x. So sine of minus alpha over 2 is the same thing as saying minus sine of positive alpha over 2. And so you're really going to get out of this when you stick in the limits of integration 2 times sine of alpha over 2. The formula that we're going to wind up getting is x bar times alpha is equal to 2r sine of alpha over 2, which has a very nice little interpretation. Let me see if I can do it justice. So the x bar location, I've tried to indicate with that little green dot. It's measured from all, all the way um, horizontally out to that green dot. That is my x bar. And if you think about it, x bar times the subtended angle of alpha is the centroidal arc length, which I'm trying to show on the dashed green lines here. Okay, So the length of the centroidal arc, which is x bar times alpha, is exactly equal to the vertical projection of that original arc. Here's the original arc. If I were to project it vertically, it would be this height, which you might think of as the bowstring. 
imagine you're, you're uh, using a bow and arrow. This is your bow. The string on that bow has a height which is given by 2 times r times sine of alpha over 2. Now why is that? Remember that half of this angle is alpha over 2. r times sine of alpha over 2 would be half of that bow height, and we've got two of those. So it's going to be that full uh, length of bow string, let's say, is exactly equal to the length of this centroidal arc. That's an interesting result. Now let's take that and apply it to a semicircle. So if I take a semicircular, sorry, I shouldn't say semicircle, a semicircular hoop portion, all right? So if I take a semicircular hoop portion, then let's just go ahead and apply that same idea. The length of the centroidal arc, well, the length of the centroidal arc is the x bar, which presumably I don't know at this stage, times the subtended angle, but I do know what angle is being subtended for a semicircular hoop, it's pi pi radians, right? It's, it's half of a circle. And that has to equal to the bowstring. Now, what is the length of this bowstring? It's a diameter, or put another way, it's 2 times r. So go ahead and solve for your x bar. Your x bar is therefore going to be the 2r, which is the diameter, divided by the pi. Okay? So I hope that makes some kind of sense. To round out the problem, let's also calculate the mass moment of inertia and to do that, I'm going to use the definition of the mass moment of inertia. I'll take that same differential patch. It has a um, differential mass, let's call it dm. And I'm just going to integrate that um, by definition r squared dm. r is a constant. It comes out of the integral. So really, I'm integrating dm, which the integral and the d are inverse operators of one another. So out of this, which I've encircled in blue, you're just going to get the mass of that shaded portion, okay? That's the mass, that's the circular arc's mass, let's say, okay? And so what is the formula for that? It's the mass moment of inertia IO, which is, again, you have to imagine that it's about the z-axis, okay? But IO is equal to r squared times its mass, the mass of this little circular portion. But if you think about it in terms of the total mass of the entire circular hoop. Let's imagine that that was given a total mass we denoted as capital M. Then by proportions, you can figure out what uh, this little mass is in terms of the total mass of the hoop. And it is given by capital M times alpha over 2 pi. Why is that? Because by proportions, the total mass of the hoop is to its total length, which is the circumference, 2 pi r. And that has to equal the mass of this portion of the circular arc, which we are denoting as little m, to its length, which again, going back to that original formula is r times alpha. The r's are going to multiply out, and so you're going to be able to solve for mass in terms of this. And if I were to stick this amount in for the little mass of that circular arc's mass, then you can rewrite the formula in terms of the total hoop's mass as being m capital times r squared multiplied by this ratio of um, subtended angles, alpha to, is to 2 pi. For a semicircular arc, its mass I can denote as little m subscript s dot a dot. Obviously, that's going to be one half of the total hoop's mass. So if you were to just try this out, you know what we should expect we are expecting that it be r squared times its mass, which is a half of capital M. And if you use this formula, what is alpha for a semicircle? It's pi. So the pi's are going to cancel from top and bottom. And indeed, you're going to get a half of the total hoops mass, cap M times r squared. I don't really want that to confuse you because normally we wouldn't do it that way. I'm just trying to say, what if the entire hoops mass was capital M? So then how could I compute a semicircular um, uh, hoops uh, mass moment of inertia? And it would be in relative, relative to the total hoop, it would be a half of the mass of the total hoop, which is the actual mass of the semicircular hoops mass times the radial dimension squared. Okay. I hope that was of some help to you. And uh, please hit the like button and subscribe if this was of any use to you. Thank you very much. Hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.